I call Wab Britt Hudson. Thank you, Mr Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise and speak on this member's bill. I think it's only appropriate you know, when the bill is introduced that we should reflect on its intention and its content before arriving at a decision whether or not to support it. Alas, it didn't take terribly long, Mr Speaker, to determine that the, this bill is simply not worthy of support. Now let's look at the intention that was expressed as to what this bill would achieve. The, the, the express and the explanatory note purports that the, uh, the, the deal the government struck with Sky City to build the convention centre would expose the taxpayer to risk and that by repealing the provisions which were uh, uh, the Sky City uh, will build a convention centre with no outlay of taxpayer money in return for some regulatory concessions, that if we repeal that, this bill is purporting if we repeal that, it reduces risk to the taxpayer. I'm afraid the reality, Mr Speaker, is that it would have the absolute opposite effect. Because instead of, in return for those concessions, regulatory concessions, a, Sky, a convention centre being built for an outlay of zero taxpayers' dollar, the taxpayer would in fact uh, be in the gun for the $400 million uh, of full value of the centre. It is difficult to see how under any interpretation of English that that somehow places lesser risk on taxpayers than spending nothing. Further than that, Mr Speaker, if we were to pass this particular member's bill, we must also question what would happen to the reputational risk of New Zealand and New Zealand government if investors around the world, even our own citizens, could not have confidence that a government of theirs, when entering into a commercial agreement, would actually honour the terms of the agreement. So there's no question uh, in my mind, Mr Speaker, that the bill doesn't actually do what it would purport to do. For that reason alone, it is not worthy of support. Uh, but if I look even uh, broader than that context, Mr Speaker, and I look about why it is we even have the Convention Centre, so what the impact of removing it or removing the, the way we can achieve that for zero taxpayer outlay, uh, what that would have. I mean, this is a government that is working hard to grow the economy, to provide more jobs, uh, to, to, build, uh, to build opportunities for New Zealanders. And this Convention Centre, Mr Speaker, will deliver growth and jobs to New Zealanders, and mainly, sir, in Auckland. Uh, it's a one that would help to place Auckland on the international map for tour, uh, convention destinations, and the flow and impact of that which we get from Tourism New Zealand, sir, is a greater uh, increase in tourism dollar spend uh, in Auckland, because more than half of the convention goers would have a partner or a spouse with them, uh, that the daily spend of groups like that is about $3,000 a head, so we get a higher value, spend, higher value tourist, greater spend, and on, on the map as a, as a destination. Uh, it would certainly boost tourism for New Auckland, and perhaps even broader, as many tourists, when they visit Auckland, Mr Speaker, will also pay uh, side visits to the other, part, uh, other parts of New Zealand. Uh, the uh, Convention Centre itself, if we look at uh, other uh, infrastructure of similar nature that might have been built in the past. This would produce a capacity of about 3,150 uh, maximum delegates, uh, spin-off benefits of about $90 million uh, projected uh, of an annual injection into the economy, 1,000 jobs during construction and 800 jobs ongoing once the convention centre uh, was up and running. Mr Speaker, it is, uh, it's worth noting that tourism was already 7% of our gross domestic product, and this, uh, this deal that we have reached would help to grow that further. And we have heard in recent days members opposite uh, try to make a lot of noise about how our economy is exposed to one particular area of exports in, in terms of dairy, uh, which is, is not performing as strongly at the moment as it has in the past. Well, all the more reason, and they talk about diversification, all the more reason if they if they, if they really meant what they were saying, sir, that they'd leap in and, behind and vote against this bill in support of the deal the government has done with Sky City to further uh, raise growth in the tourism industry in New Zealand and help to provide that diversification. So, Mr Speaker, the bill simply won't do what it states its intention is. It's a poorly drafted bill, a poorly directed bill, and I do not support it. I call uh, Materia Ture. Thank you, Mr Speaker. 